Let's get some more analysis. I'm here with our international affairs editor, Kedavan Gorgistani. Kedavan, welcome to the programme. Um, who are these militant groups that both sides say they're targeting on the other side of the border? Uh, well, uh, these are uh, two groups that operate in regions that are along that border between Pakistan and Iran. It's a very long border, 900 uh, kilometers, as we see uh, there. Uh, so there is uh, Balochistan, which is uh, in uh, Pakistani territory, and there is Sistan and uh, Balochistan, uh, the province that is in uh, the Iranian uh, territory. Now, both of the groups that were targeted are ethnically Baloch. Uh, both uh, are waging armed insurgency against uh, the states that are on op uh, opposing sides. So uh, you have uh, those in uh, the Sistan and Baluchistan uh, area that are targeting uh, Pakistanis and uh, the Balochistan uh, group that are targeting uh, the Iranian uh, forces, the Iranian uh, states. Uh, and both countries blame each other, so the governments of both countries blame each other for uh, sort of giving safe haven uh, to uh, these groups. Now, on one side, you have uh, Jaish al-Adil, uh, which is a Sunni group that's been uh, targeting uh, the Iranian government and Iranian uh, forces. And then you have the Balochistan Liberation Army and Balochistan Liberation Front, which are groups uh, that are uh, targeting uh, the Pakistani uh, forces. So there is a common ground. There is a common regionality to this, but there is one group that has a religious aspect to it, uh, because the group that is targeting Iran is a Sunni group that is targeting a majority Shi'a uh, uh, country uh, that is uh, Iran. And this insurgency on both sides has been sort of simmering for uh, more uh, than two decades. So it's not a new uh, thing, but it seems to have uh, boiled over, if you will, in this case. OK, and, you know, in the last hour or so, we've had the EU expressing, quote, utmost concern over these uh, this uh, deterioration of relations between Pakistan and Iran. We've got Russia urging maximum restraint, they say. That's just come out in the last hour or so as well. I mean, how, some people will be wondering, has it got to this point between Tehran and Islamabad? Well, uh, there have been some questions as to uh, the motivation initially of Iran to strike first uh, on those groups. Now, both countries are saying that they are targeting specific militant groups, that these are not attacks on either one of the states. Uh, but the fact is that while uh, these insurgencies have been going on for uh, about two decades, as I was saying, uh, there has never been this level of uh, retaliation from either uh, side. The Pakistanis really uh, targeting deep into uh, Iranian uh, territory. The Iranians also uh, doing a pretty big uh, strike, uh, if you will. And the motivation for Iran is still uh, uh, unclear. And the reason why uh, Pakistan retaliated is clear. Uh, but the scale of that retaliation is something that they have not really done uh, before. And it's a line that uh, even the U.S. or the Israelis have never crossed with Iran, which is striking so deep into Iranian uh, territory. But uh, there are certain aspects uh, of context that could explain why these strikes are happening now. For Iran, there is growing pressure after uh, that, atta that attack on Kerman earlier this year, a couple of uh, weeks ago, that left more than 80 uh, people uh, killed, that were was claimed by the Islamic uh, State uh, group. The Iranian government's under pressure to uh, sort of uh, strike back, if you will. And so they're saying that these militant groups have some sort of ties with the Islamic State state group, as well as with Israel. So it's all a big of a mix. And then for Pakistan, there are elections coming up and next month. They have to show that their army is ready to retaliate and will not let anyone strike on the, their territory. So that could explain, but it's very unclear why this has really escalated the way it has right now.